Hi, my name is Scott Regenbogen. I'm a colorectal surgeon at the University of Michigan, and welcome to the IBD School 400 series. In this video, IBD School 402, you will get an overview of the surgical options available for patients with ulcerative colitis. For ulcerative colitis, surgery always involves removing the entire colon and rectum, even for patients whose problem only involves a smaller portion of the colon. In these patients, removal of part of the colon is not recommended because of the very high likelihood of recurrence of ulcerative colitis in the remaining colon. After a patient undergoes removal of the colon and rectum, there are two options for completing the operation. Traditionally, the only solution to ulcerative colitis used to be to bring the small intestine to the skin to drain to a bag. This opening of the intestine to the skin is called an ostomy or stoma. In ulcerative colitis, after removal of the colon and rectum, this would result in an ileostomy in which the end of the small intestine, called the ileum, is brought to the skin as a stoma. However, decades ago, surgeons developed techniques for reattaching the small intestine to the anus so that patients could choose to not wear a bag forever. Ulcerative colitis patients now have the choice between either wearing a bag with a permanent ileostomy or to undergo a procedure in which the small intestine is attached to the anus and there is only a temporary rather than permanent ileostomy. We will discuss the options of permanent ileostomy and J-pouch surgery further in IBD school videos 405 and 407. When surgery takes place in an emergency setting, or if a patient is on steroids or sick in the hospital, we often try to put off the highest risk portions of the operation for the removal of the rectum and the construction of the J-pouch. For this reason, we will instead remove the colon and leave the rectum for later, making a temporary ileostomy. The patient then later can elect to either have the rectum removed and make the ileostomy permanent, or instead to have a J-pouch constructed. This strategy is discussed in IBD School 403, our video on subtotal colectomy. The other option for surgery is a J-pouch. The creation of a J-pouch generally involves the creation of a temporary ileostomy in order to allow the J-pouch to heal after the operation. A few months later, we will perform a smaller operation to close the temporary ileostomy. In an elective setting, the J-pouch procedure requires two operations. In the first operation, we remove the colon and rectum, create the J-pouch and the ileostomy, and in the second operation, we close the ileostomy. For patients in an emergency setting, a J-pouch construction requires three operations. In the first operation, we remove the colon and create an ileostomy. In the second operation, we remove the rectum, create the J-pouch and a temporary ileostomy. And in the third operation, we close the ileostomy. The risks of J-pouch surgery include the potential for a leak of the J-pouch from the new connections made during the operation, which could lead to poor function of the pouch, and could result in symptoms similar to those of a colitis flare. The time separating each of the operations will be about three months each. Between operations, there is no change or difference in the diet or nutrition needs of a patient who has an ileostomy compared with someone with a J-pouch. So the choice between these operations is driven largely by people's best estimate of which option will best suit their quality of life and their lifestyle. In general, patients who choose to undergo ileostomy are often patients who want to avoid multiple operations, people who have trouble controlling the release of stool, or people who might have Crohn's disease rather than ulcerative colitis. Patients who choose to undergo J-pouch surgery tend to be motivated to avoid permanent ileostomy, are healthy enough to undergo multiple operations, and already have good control of their bowels. The choice between ostomy surgery and a J-pouch should depend on the progress of your colitis and your priorities for future quality of life with either an ostomy or a J-pouch. To learn more, watch our videos in IBD School 414 and 415 on the experience of living with an ostomy or a J-pouch. I'm Scott Regenbogen, and thank you for watching IBD School.